In this video, we're going to look at how to identify and handle missing data. And I like to think of missing data as data in a data set that should be there, but is not there. So this video looks at how do, what kinds of missing data are there and what exactly do we do with it. So first, uh, let's look at why does data go missing? So understanding why it goes missing helps to kind of figure out what we might want to do about it. Well, there's lots of different reasons. And, and really the tricky thing with missing data, you have all this data and something's missing, is that um, there's so many reasons why it could be that there is no data available. For instance, you're collecting phone numbers and you're asking for a mobile phone number and your home phone number, but some people don't have a home phone. They only use a mobile phone and so they leave it blank. Sometimes people decide not to answer. You have a question about maybe where they live and they don't want to mention their city and so it's blank for that reason. Sometimes you have a long survey and they skip over a question accidentally. They just forgot to answer. If they had seen it, they would have answered, but in this case, they forgot. Uh, sometimes the data was entered, but somewhere in the data manipulation process, someone pressed a delete key and that data was deleted. That's why it's missing there. Uh, sometimes, if maybe you're collecting counts, like how many people showed up to meetings each time, and then when maybe there, no one showed up at all, uh, where it was just a host and no one else showed up. Maybe the number was zero, but they left it missing as a way to indicate zero. That could be the case. And which of these is the case in a particular scenario of missing data? It's hard to know. And that's the real challenge of missing data. There are so many things it could mean, and you don't know which of them it does. So the next question then is, does it really matter? Well, um, w when we're looking at data analysis, especially data mining, it matters a lot because most data mining techniques cannot work with missing data. For example, linear regression, you might have uh, maybe a million bits of data and there's one missing somewhere, boom, it stops, it won't do anything because of that one missing piece of data. There's other techniques such as decision trees that can handle missing data fine. They treat it as data itself, but most machine learning uh, techniques and statistical techniques will not function if there's any missing data anywhere. Uh, so it has to be dealt with in some way. One major issue when dealing with missing data is a question of, is the missingness random or biased? And Trying to figure this out is very important because it helps understand, uh, answer the question of, does it really matter if the data is missing? So when we talk about patterns of missing data, there's three main patterns that statisticians talk about. Data might be missing completely at random, missing partially at random, which actually is called missing at random by statisticians, or it might be missing not at random. We're going to look at each of these and try to understand what their implications are for data analysis. In, in uh, this video, we're going to use an artificial data set, so with a few columns, as you see here, and we're going to focus on the age column, and we're going to see different issues with missing values there. But before going ahead, just pause the, minute, uh, the video for a moment and try to figure out if you can see any pattern to the missing values in the age column. If there's any pattern or reason behind them. Well, I don't know if you found a pattern. I didn't find any, because this is missing completely at random. And that means that the data that is missing here and here is truly completely random, just randomly missing. Actually, to generate it, I ran a random number generator to pick out which numbers to pick out. There, there's just no pattern to there. Uh, some ages are missing, but there's no discernible pattern to it. 
in this case, uh, that's okay. I mean, it always happens. Some data is always missing. And later in the video, we'll see how to handle missing data. And you can handle them using uh, many different uh, approaches. And it's safe to do so because the randomness is completely random. I'm sorry, the missingness is completely random. How about this case here? Here we have other values of age that are missing. And pause the video for a moment and see if you can discern a pattern. And when I say a pattern, you have to look at the other variables and see if there's any relationship you can tell between the other variables and when age is missing. Okay, so pause the video for a moment and see if you can find a pattern. Okay, in this case, we have what we call missing partially at random. And that is when, uh, now, technically speaking, statisticians call this missing at random, M-A-R, but that term confuses me because everything is missing at random. So I like to call it missing partially at random. And that's because there is a partial but not total pattern to the randomness. So y, so that's a column, in this case, age is what we're looking at, is m par, missing partial at random. If when some other variable has certain values, then y is more likely to be missing. So if you were able to find it, you can see that every time here that age is missing, it happens to be for a female. There are some females for which age is not missing, but age is never missing for a male. It won't usually be that drastic in a real life data set, but this is a small toy data set. But here you can see that, and it, I guess it uh, reflects a true stereotype that women are generally less likely to reveal their ages uh, than men. And this is reflected in this data set. So the question is that, is this a problem? What can you do about it? Well, generally this is an acceptable kind of randomness. Uh, as long as you understand that it is biased there. And generally speaking, you can deal with missingness in the ways we're going to see, uh, with the one exception that because you know that the, the missingness in age is related to the gender value, you are not able to tell, to determine any relationship between gender and age. Any relationship between gender and age will be biased because it is missing age is missing in some cases depending on gender. So you can do other things with age uh, and once you deal with the missing values, but as long as it's not directly related with gender, then uh, you, you should be okay. How about in this case? So take a moment again and see if you can discern any pattern uh, to the missingness here. Okay, now this one is more subtle and yet more serious as it is missing not at random. And missing not at random means that there is a pattern, but it does not depend necessarily on any other variables, at least not directly. The pattern to the missingness depends on itself. In other words, uh, y, a variable is m nar, missing not at random, when it is more likely to be missing when it itself is within certain ranges. So how do you know the range of the missing values if you can't see the missing values? Well, in this data set, when you look at some of the other variables, like the two cases here where values are missing, the person owns their own home, their occupation, they're retired, their incomes are medium or relatively high, they might have uh, children or not, but someone who owns their home, their own home is retired, is more likely to be an older person. And so you have here that values are missing when it's more likely that they are older than actually any of the values that you see, they're more likely older than 53 if they're retired. And there you see that the value of age itself 
it indicates that in this data set, older people tend to not reveal their age. And that's a big problem. It's the age itself that determines or has an influence on whether or not someone reveals their age. And that could be a big issue. Another example would be if maybe you have a data set where you're asking for income, you don't see it here, but maybe the income values are therefore are less more likely to be missing when they are higher, which might be told by maybe their occupation, maybe their senior executives, uh, and maybe they own two or three homes, then that could be an indication that it's wealthier people that are not divulging their age. And this is the worst kind of missing this pattern because the, the value itself is bias. Uh, in most statistical analyses, the algorithm has to take an average and the variance of each column. And if we take the average age, perhaps the average age would be something like, uh, let's say 40. But if you were to have these retired people's ages, the average might r rise to 45 or higher. And so any analysis that you're doing assumes a younger age than what is actually the case. And that means that anything that you're analyzing and any implications based on age are biased. This means, this means that the age value is useless. It is bad data and it cannot be fixed because anything you do with it is biased. So understand the patterns of missing data. Let's look at what you can do to fix missing data. Uh, there's five general things you could do. Let's swatch deletion, variable removal, pairwise deletion, missing data imputation, or you could do nothing. So let's look at each of these. Uh, the first option, if you have missing data, is you might delete the entire row each time anything is missing in that row or missing values in a specific variable. So if the variable is very important where data is missing, and if you have enough data so that maybe you're only losing 1% or 2% of your data, that could be acceptable an acceptable way to do it missing uh, data. Another option to deal with missing data is in some cases, you decide that a variable that has some missing data, you just get rid of the entire variable. And then once you've gotten rid of it, there's no mi more missing data. This is generally an extreme solution in the sense that it's the last resort uh, because the variables are much more or the attributes are much more valuable than the specific rows and when you lose a variable or an attribute you're really losing important information so it's only if you don't have any other alternative that you would delete an entire variable or column another option is called pairwise deletion and this is a little bit hard to describe because it's really something that you as an analyst would not do directly it's an option that some statistical tools have built in and you might need to enable it or not. And what it is, is that the statistical tools usually calculate correlations between all the variables. And when you specify pairwise deletion, you're just telling it that when there's a missing value, just ignore that particular row and column combination and use use all the other uh, rows, all the other columns that are available to get uh, the correlations needed, and then it can go on and do the analysis. Uh, so this is an automatic option, and it's uh, it works fine a lot of the time. But again, if you have biases built in, it will not save you from the biases. Um, a final option, and this is a very uh, popular one, is to try to guess the missing value and fill it in. And trying to guess doesn't necessarily mean you're really trying to guess the exact value. It means fill it in with a reasonable estimation. So if uh, you have numeric values, usually you use the, the mean, that's the average, and you fill in the av you fill in the missing values with the average. And uh, if you have a categorical variables such as owner rents or salary here, you look at the most 
popular category. So for instance, if you had maybe cities and maybe 60% of the cities were Lille, uh, 20% were Paris, and uh, the remaining 20% were Sophie Antipolis, then there are some missing values. You say, well, since 60% of the total data set are Lille, it's more likely to be Lille. And so you fill it in with most common value, and that's called the mode, the most common uh, categorical value. Um, however, do not replace missing numbers with zeros because uh, the age that is missing is most likely, almost definitely not zero, and that will include a big bias. The advantage of including the, uh, substituting the mean is that when the statistical analysis d takes the average of everything, the mean remains the same. It does not change with the substitution. There are problems with it restrains the variance, but that's another issue. Uh, there are other, also some statistical inference techniques possible, such that in my, the analysis might look at all the other variables and based on that, make an estimation, maybe using a decision tree or a regression of the missing value. So that's also possible to not just use a mean, but to use a reasonable estimate. So there's different ways. And this is really attractive because it serves as much as data as possible, especially when your data set is small, because instead of deleting rows or deleting columns, you're keeping all the data. So that's another option. Then the final option is you just leave it missing. As I said, most statistical techniques uh, cannot handle that, but you're not using every variable or column for every analysis. So maybe if you know in your analysis you're not going to use age, then just don't uh, delete it. Just leave it, uh, leave values missing. So you don't always have to delete everything that's missing. It's only if you know you really need them and the technique uh, really requires filled in values. Okay, so those are uh, the patterns of missing data and the ways to handle missing data. And when you bring these together, we can look at how to handle missing data based on the missing patterns. So based on these five, uh, well, the four approaches other than do nothing, if you have data that's missing completely at random, that is there is no pattern, it's absolutely random to what is missing, uh, you don't need to delete the rows with missing values, and it's not recommended to delete the columns uh, with missing values because you're losing a lot of data. Pairwise deletion, that's letting the statistical technique handle it or guessing the missing value, imputing uh, these missing values, uh, these are acceptable options. If, uh, however, it's missing partially at random, so like in our example, missingness and age dependent on gender, then you could remove the rows that have missing values. So that's a consideration. Or you could fill in the missing values. Uh, however, two things, you have to be careful to completely remove the variable. It's not necessary to throw away uh, the value that's part missing partially at random, except if you really want to know the relationship between that variable and the variable it depends on. So if you, part of your analysis, you really want to know the relationship between age and gender, but some ages are missing based on gender, you can't do that. You have to throw away the age because it is biased. And pairwise deletion is not suitable for missing parts at random because it makes your data bias. It will incorporate the bias uh, into that. Then uh, the last type of missing pattern is missing not at random when they're, for example, when older people reveal, uh, do not uh, reveal their age or when people with higher incomes do not reveal their incomes. When the variable itself is biased on itself, you have no choice but throw away that variable. You cannot, none of the other solutions is suitable because all the other solutions will incorporate and propagate the bias throughout the data set. So you, that, data, that variable is corrupted, it's uh, unreliable, you have to throw it away. Okay. So that's uh, what we have for missing uh, data, the different patterns and different ways to handle these kinds of issues.